Let's go. We got Neo today reporting earnings after hours. We're getting right into it, okay? Stock's down 4%. After being up 8.5% uh, during the normal trading session, was up a little bit after hours, uh, up around really t nearly 3%. Now it's falling down a little bit, so let's take a look at these earnings. If you remember, I uh, wasn't quite so sure on this uh, uh, EPS line personally compared to the analyst perspective. Um, thought with the uh, release of a new vehicle, it might impact the margin a little bit, but the revenue I kind of saw as a beat, so to see it down, huh, not sure what to say here, but we'll take a look. So, NEO puts up a uh, non-GAAP EPS of negative 14 cents, beats by 24 cents, and an EPS line of negative 16 misses by 10 cents. So, not unexpected. I do think a majority of this is because of the less uh, lesser in vehicle margin that they got because of the EC7 that was released. Now, one thing that is positive to say here is this is massive improvement year over year, actually, when you think about it. If you compare this to uh, the fourth quarter of last year, this is really massive improvement, all things considered. And a revenue line of $1.02 billion, first time they've ever crossed a billion dollars, up 149.3% year over year. Is a miss by 20 million, a slight miss. But overall, a massive growth year over year, 150% growth year over year. Whether that be a miss or not, I think that speaks for itself, and that that's quite impressive. Um, good numbers here too. Vehicle margin delivery came in at 17.2 compared to negative 6% of the fourth quarter last year, and 14.5 in the in the third quarter which honestly is really impressive here, all things considered. I'm very impressed with what they're able to do because of the fact that uh, these uh, delivery numbers here um, or this margin number is actually increasing when you talk about releasing a new vehicle. Typically, when you release a new vehicle with these companies, the vehicle margin, they're selling at a loss for the most part. It's usually a negative margin, but to see they were able to uh, do what they were doing, pretty nice. Um, EC6, I should say. Did I say EC7? That was bad. My bad. My bad. Uh, quarterly vehicle deliveries uh, came in at 17,353. And there are, they are giving a quarterly outlook as well. Uh, one that obviously we're going to go ahead and take a peek at because we love taking a peek at it, okay? Looks like they're expecting deliveries between 20,000 and 20,500 vehicles, which is an increase of 421 to 434% year over year. Holy crap, that's a huge quarter one. Are you kidding me? Uh, total revenue between uh, $1.13 billion uh, and $1.16 billion. That is a massive, massive growth year over year. Again, a 400% growth in terms of uh, revenue. That is incredible uh, outlook there. And I don't have a, I, I don't have a clue why this stock's down. Um, Son of a gun, that seems kind of crazy. We'll look at, at seeing some more fine details here, see what we see. Again, you see this delivery line, are you kidding me? Quarter one of this year, which they're comparing in the outlook, they only put up 3,800 vehicles. Yet, they're going to go ahead and say they're going to deliver 20,000 this quarter? That's the biggest they've ever had. You see the rise here, that's what I think is quite impressive with this company. It's been a continually on the rise since Q1 of 2019 here from four uh you know 4000 vehicles here increasing to 4800 to 8000 to 10000 to 12000 to 17000 now to, uh, potentially to 20000 they're saying so really crazy you see the year over year difference 400 uh 43700 in 2020 versus 2500 in 2019 over 100% increase there they doubled their business in terms of deliveries year over year that's pretty massive um I don't think anyone can argue that. That's quite incredible. And for the quarter, they delivered 4,900 EC6s. That's where I talk about how important this new model is. This model is, is doing great things, and it's it's really overtaking the ES6 in terms of deliveries um, uh, coming up here, probably starting this next month. So really nice. Uh, vehicle sales total came in at $946 million, uh, representing a 130% increase compared to 2019. Uh, 2019's fourth quarter, and even a 44% increase from quarter three of this year. 
pretty nice vehicle margin incredible growth there as, as we saw uh, total revenue we saw that 133 percent growth um, really nice really nice there gross profit um, was actually believe it or not 175 million dollars gross profit existed gross profit existed can you imagine that I don't know if anyone could imagine such thing as gross profit but obviously we saw a net loss here because we saw a negative GAV EPS line net loss uh, came in at 212 million now that's actually quite incredible because it decreases 51 percent from the year prior so they uh, lost over uh, 400 million in the same quarter last year that's pretty nice pretty nice um, so all things considered things are looking in the right direction for this company when you look at, at what they're doing here um, obviously you see year-over-year -year changes just positive positive numbers through here on all the things you want to see and the things you want to see a loss on or a decrease in you see in it net loss loss from operations adjusted net loss all those numbers you want to see a decrease we're seeing a decrease we're seeing a growth in margin profit uh, revenues vehicle uh, margin uh, vehicle sales really good to see those numbers that's fantastic stuff there fantastic um, for the full year obviously 106 percent growth year over year really nice vehicle margin at 12.7 compares to negative 9.9 .9 of the year prior uh, loss for the full year came in at 706 million uh, which is a decrease of 58 percent from the year prior where they lost uh, over uh, 1.5 billion dollars heck yeah um, that was lost from operation or, or blah, blah, blah. Uh, loss from operations net loss came in at uh, 812 million uh, which is down 53 percent year over year they lost over 1600 uh, in 2019 so things are going good and and you may see we see a hint of profitability I mean the way this trend goes we're gonna be darn close to profitable in 2021 it looks like so that's pretty exciting for this company um, and what they're able to do so we saw deliveries obviously quite high um, 5,007 or 5,500 vehicles in February against short month six but that's still overall 689 percent year-over-year growth crazy stuff February never a huge month for them but really nice um, 2,200 ES6s 2,035 ES uh, or EC6s um, really nice stuff so yeah 1,300 ES8s in February um, so that those are good numbers uh, really good numbers uh, obviously they had a stock offering during this time in which they sold some some stock uh, nothing crazy in here some of these details we are gonna look at the balance sheet too worth mentioning here you gotta look at it uh, and again these are in renminbi so you gotta consider that the comparison here um, it's quite different. Most of it, I, I mean, I, I'll compare mostly to the U.S. dollars because it's something you might necessarily understand a little bit better. Total current assets coming in at seven billion dollars. Pretty nice for this company, can't lie. Uh, most of it is due, um, due to a massive increase uh, in overall cash and cash equivalents, um, an increase by right around five five times the amount, a little bit under five times the amount in cash and cash equivalents added to this balance sheet. Total assets in general sitting at $8.3 billion. Uh, again, most of that's because of current uh, assets. That's where you see the majority of that rise here. But overall, quite an increase year over year um, by around five, uh, really four and a half times that amount, as we saw with the total current assets. Total current liabilities, really only crazy. I mean, it's crazy to think about. It's only sitting here at $2.1 billion dollars in total current liabilities not that bad overall definitely an increase year over year but not not by nearly as much as you saw um, with uh, with the asset growth again assets grew by quite a bit more total liabilities in general 3.5 billion dollars really didn't grow that much uh, year over year all things considered did not at all well assets saw a major increase so when you look at it um, stockholder equity it's quite incredible. This company had a stockholder. It was a deficit last year, um, a decent chunk of deficit, uh, around a billion dollars. Um, 
where this year they've got a $4 billion equity on this company. So that's where you see in this company's turning around. They're doing a lot of good stuff here, um, NEO is. So for me, I mean, you got to look at things uh, in perspective. Um, you see a full year, full year sales on this company, um, $15 billion uh, in renminbi. Fifteen. Million. We don't care about that, okay? We care about billions of U.S. dollars, baby. Um, vehicle sales for the full uh, year, which are right here, came in at two point three billion dollars. Now you got to look at the stock and see uh, it is trading in a market cap of seventy eight right now. So there's no doubt this stock is expensive, right? Um, we're talking about quite the high multiple there. And again, without profitability, the valuation's pretty high. But what I might argue here is the fact that you're buying a company here that's increasing sales 150% year over year and continuing that trend and potentially, based off of their numbers, getting profitability uh, this year, potentially. Um, we'll see what that looks like, obviously. But this is incredible. This company's doing great things. And as long as we're honest, we're talking about potential global expansion in the next year, too, which could be huge for the business. So keep that in mind when you're looking at uh, Neo stock. I, I think it's worth buying still. I hate it. Under 50. I mean, it's high because my cost basis is $2, but um, I think it's still worth buying. That's what I got for you today. Really hope you enjoyed.